our first guest on the show today, Joe Ballman, president of the Birmingham Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce. Our small businesses are the back bone of the country and during the pandemic they are definitely still struggling there's been a lot of support to try to keep them in business but still a really hard time for them joe how are you doing today seem uh, joe it seems like we're having a little bit of i'll try now oh hey uh let's check your audio now hey folks it's live tv we're all doing this y'all are on zoom you know how it works hey joe how are you <laughs> I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you for having me on. There you are, good to have you. Uh, I know we like to check in with you uh, on a regular basis, but give us an update. How are things going over there? Uh, well, you know, uh, retail continues to be a struggle. Um, many of our retailers, and especially our restaurants, uh, remain on limited hours. So uh, if you're planning on visiting your favorite store or your favorite restaurant, make sure to either call ahead or go on their website and see if their hours have been adjusted uh, due to the pandemic. Many of them, uh, for instance, like many of the restaurants in the Birmingham Bluefield area uh, that used to be open for lunch no longer are. So they're, op they're doing dinner only service. So just save yourself some time and some uh, potential frustration and either call ahead or um, check out the website for their, their hours. And the same thing with retailers. Many of the retailers now, for instance, are closed on Monday. So um, they're, I think you know they're doing what they can to try to keep their expenses down as much as possible because obviously um, they've all you know experienced significant reductions in revenue. Yeah, I've even run into that a few times. You show up and the doors are closed and you're like, oh. So, um, you know, I know the last time we talked to you, uh, one of the big issues that some of these uh, businesses were having was trying to get employees. Has that improved at all, or do they anticipate it's got better, but now it's going to get worse as kids go back to college? Um, it may have gotten better marginally, but uh, we continue to hear from our members that they're really struggling to have enough staff. And that's another reason why some of these places are on restricted hours because they don't have enough staff um, to do a full schedule. Um, you know, obviously with the, the status of schools, uh, K-12 schools primarily being in flux, uh, many parents who thought their kids were gonna be back in school are now finding that they're at home. And so they're either extending their working remotely for their jobs or um, they're taking FMLA, they're taking sick time, they're doing whatever they can to stay home with their children because, you know, not everybody has the ability or opportunity to provide um, child care services or education assistance. So that continues to be a major, major issue for our small businesses is, um, you know, remote learning. We all understand why it's happening and why it's taking place, but um, it, 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 it continues to be a major challenge. Joe Bauman with us. He is the president of the Birmingham Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Joe, uh, on the topic of finding that talent to come in and take over some of these positions, uh, which has been such a struggle, what are some of, what, what are some of those things that, some of those uh, roles that these companies are looking to fill and, and what are some of the kind of candidates that they are looking for? Because there are a lot of people that are out of work that are looking for work as well. So obviously the service industry rem uh, remains a key pressure point. Um, you know, some of the employees just aren't comfortable working in a COVID environment. That's, that's a major concern that they, they're concerned about their own safety and their family safety. Um, the other issue is, you know, matching up the right skills with the right jobs, as you said, but I have to tell you, I've had several of our members um, who have basically said, we just need people to come in our doors, we can train them. And so where it used to be before, if you didn't have a resume that aligned, you know, substantially with what the job description was, um, you probably wouldn't even apply for that job. What we're hearing from employers now is, unless it's, you know, something that, that requires a specific degree, but if it's, you know, if it's any kind of skill or, or, or that you can learn on the job, they're saying, just come to us and we will train you. We will pay you while we're training you. Um, it, it's that 
um, serious of an issue for many, many employers. I know that there have been a lot of grants out there for some of these small businesses. Are those grants running out now? And what's the next phase? So starting with the federal government, I think everybody was most familiar with the PPP grant loans slash grants um, through the CARES Act. So the way that those worked, if you remember, um, you had eight weeks from the time to when you received the money to use it on your payroll. And if you followed all the rules, then uh, it was likely converted to a grant. Most people who obviously received those back in May or June, um, they've now burned through that. Everybody's waiting for phase four of the CARES Act and some supplemental funding. But as we've all heard and seen, um, there seems to be serious roadblocks in Congress right now to that. Congress isn't even in session until after Labor Day. So, um, and they're very far apart on, on uh, additional uh, help. Now, the state of Michigan, they did accept um, the $300 supplement from the federal government for extended unemployment. So at least those employees who are still out of work, um, it's not the same as the $600 they were getting previously, but if they haven't yet, they should soon start receiving a $300 supplement weekly in their unemployment. At the state level, um, the state just did their Michigan business restart uh, grant cycle through the MEDC. That has been closed, and it's our understanding that the grants are going to begin being awarded at the end of this month. So if you're a small business who has applied for up to a $20,000 grant, um, stay tuned, um, and you, you should be finding out within three or four weeks whether you got it. On the county side, Oakland County has been very aggressive in using some of their um, COVID dollars to help small businesses with grants. They've done four rounds, I believe, already, and they just announced last week that they've extended the deadline for the most recent round of grants to September 14th, I believe. So if you're a small business in, in Oakland County, if you haven't received a county stabilization grant yet, um, certainly apply for one. And um, again, those are up to $20,000. So um, there is help out there. Um, our concern, of course, is going to be if the federal government doesn't come to some consensus on phase four of the CARES Act, um, what's going to happen to all of these uh, small businesses when all of the, uh, the grants run out? And especially for small businesses that remain closed, um, you know, again, the PPP grants were intended to keep people employed. So you kept people on the payroll, you paid them, you're not open, so you're not doing any business, you don't have any revenue. And so they're going to be back in the same position that they were before, that um, with very limited revenue and no, no help. So we're, we're really hoping we've been working very closely with our members of Congress um, in the state of Michigan, and they've been very responsive uh, in terms of making sure that they understand um, that things are not better. Uh, and frankly, um, what we're hearing is that our small businesses are worried that come cold weather in the winter, uh, things are frankly going to get worse. So um, we're just, you know, I think the federal government has the, the largest ability to be um, the, su the support mechanism, and that's what we continue to, to fight for every day. So many things for us to touch on here, but let's start with the grants. For some of these small businesses that are overwhelmed with the process, what do you want them to know? So the county grants are actually quite simple. Um, you know, it's I, it's a maybe a 30 minute process. You do have to have some financial records that you have to pull um, to show, you know, past budgets and your revenue, your payrolls, uh, so on and so forth. Um, the same with the state grant, Obviously with the federal grants, either the idle loans, which is the um, economic injury disaster loans that are being done um, through the SBA or the PPP, they, more, they are more extensive. Our recommendation to our members is if they have an accountant, if they have a payroll specialist, if they have you know, that kind of position to really bring them into the process and, and, and have them help with the system, and then obviously you have to have a, an established relationship with your lender if you're going to be going for a loan because all the loans are being funneled through local banks. So uh, make sure to stay in close contact with your, uh, with your accountant and, and your banker. 
Joe, you talked a lot about how the federal loans are going to be more critical than anything for the longevity, longevity of the survival of our small businesses. For the, and, and you've talked to our congressmen in, in the state of Michigan and, and our senators and so of your small businesses, I'm sure, but for the general public so they can take action as well. From a, from a temporal standpoint, how long do our businesses have if, they're, if these loans are not coming in in a timely manner before they're in a position where it's do or die? Um, I would say that uh, now, you know, the, the governor is, uh, has a press conference scheduled for 2.30 this afternoon. Um, what we're hearing is she may at long last uh, bring liberty to local gyms, uh, movie theaters, and bowling centers, and will allow them to reopen in some uh, limited capacity. We don't know that for sure, but that's what we're hearing from our friends in Lansing. If you think about it, you know, if you have a business that hasn't been open in six months, um, while it's true, you have saved all of the expenses of running a business, but you also haven't generated any revenue. And so it would be just like anybody being out of work for six months. Well, how long can you, can you do that? Um, most of the retailers that we talk to that are still open in some capacity They've let go staff. They're trying to do more things themselves. Um, as we know, in, like in downtown Birmingham, they don't get nearly the foot traffic that they do in the winter months as they do in the spring and summer for obvious reasons. It's an outdoors environment. So if there isn't a, uh, a long range plan to, to help um, businesses in certain industry sectors that have been the hardest hit and continue to be the hardest hit, um, it's not, it, it, it's, it, it's not a promising um, future, I have to say. And that's why we're working so hard every day to educate our members, to let them know what programs are out there that they can tap into, um, how to get a hold of their, uh, their elected officials, to speak directly with them and their staff, to let them know what their situations are, and to, and to make sure that everybody understands that um, while we all may be growing weary of dealing with uh, COVID-19 and the virus, uh, it hasn't gone away. The executive orders from the governor are still in place in terms of how people can conduct business and public gatherings. You know, if you are a caterer or an event space, you essentially have been out of business for six months. And so um, while we understand the health implications of all of that and the public health reasons, it can't go on forever. Something has to, uh, something has to be done to to accommodate or to, to support these specific industries or, you know, in 2021, frankly, we just don't know how many are still going to be around. Yeah, there's a lot of concern going into the winter months, how some of these restaurants that have been able to expand outside or businesses. Hey, uh, Joe, I know some of the state lawmakers right now are in discussions concerning some new laws to try to protect businesses from COVID-19 and not just businesses, but maybe schools, nursing homes, things of that nature. But where do you stand as a small business entity and supporter and trying to push this issue uh, with the lawmakers? And what they're trying to say is that, hey, as a small business, we shouldn't be held responsible if someone is um, test positive because it's hard to trace where people actually get the virus. Right, thank you very much for asking that. So there was actually testimony in Lansing yesterday. There are two bills making their way through the House and Senate, which are essentially um, liability shield laws for small businesses and places like schools that you mentioned. Um, the Birmingham Bloomfield Chamber is part of a coalition through the Michigan Chamber that is supporting the legislation and pushing for this liability protection um, for the very reason that you just said. Um, we all know we live in a very litigious society. And even though you, you know, have no liability, it doesn't prevent somebody from still uh, suing you. And there are costs uh, associated with defending lawsuits, even if they're frivolous. So again, it's kind of like piling on. Your revenue is down. Your, your expenses are the same. You don't have as many customers as you, as you used to have to. And now you have to fight a lawsuit from somebody who claims that they're in your store or restaurant 
and uh, they, they contracted the virus and now they're suing you. You can't really prove that they got it there, but guess what? You also can't prove that they didn't. And that's where settlements come in. And so the, the object of these liability shield laws would simply be small businesses would be protected from lawsuits specifically from people claiming that they contracted the virus at your establishment. Now there is one caveat to that is our small businesses have to make sure that they are following all the protocols called for by the CDC, the state health department, the state of Michigan, that they're doing everything they can within their power to mitigate the likelihood of somebody contracting COVID in their establishment. If there's gross negligence, if it can be proven that they weren't following um, the, the rules and the guidelines, then that's a completely separate issue. But this is for um, just trying to provide some blanket protection for small businesses so they don't have to deal with frivolous lawsuits on top of everything else. Joe Bauman with us, president of the Birmingham Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce on the Oakland County Megacast. Just a couple more minutes with you, Joe, before we have to let you go. Anything else that's important for our audience to know about our small business community or anything else you'd like to talk about today with us? Well, I always try to end on a positive note, and I have to say that that's been quite a challenge these past few months. But I do want to mention, if you're not aware, that um, phase two of the city of Birmingham's major uh, road reconstruction project in the heart of downtown Birmingham is about 75 to 80% uh, completed and on schedule. If you're not familiar with it, um, the city has completely re is completely rebuilding uh, the road and all of the, the pedestrian walkways and, and the landscaping on Maple Road, which runs right through the heart of downtown Birmingham from Woodward West all the way to Southfield Road. They've also reconfigured the Southfield Maple intersection. So if you're familiar with that at all, you'll know why they needed to do that. Um, similar to what they did with Old Woodward two years ago, um, they really made it more pedestrian friendly, um, multimodal uh, use of the road. So they're accommodating bikes and mopeds and cars, um, calming the street so people aren't going as fast, um, doing uh, some great landscaping. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. We're hoping that we get the road reopened by the end of September. So there'll still be a couple of months of, of outdoor shopping available and people are really going to love and wanting to come down and visit downtown Birmingham and help support the local merchants in this really beautiful environment. That is good news because I say road construction in the middle of all of this has not been good. I try to avoid some of those areas. Hey, Joe, before uh, we let you go, we have to ask, while we like your current background because it does highlight your partnership, we like the old one. It was it, it was very snazzy. <laughs> well, I, I, I'll, I will... Um... I'll, I'll mix them up. How's that? Next time I'll come with a different one. <laughs> you know what? You need a Zoom producer like we have, and then you, uh, you could switch the background uh, throughout the uh, uh, the interview. I got you. Well, you know, the, the, the businesses um, that are on our sponsor board are what we call our legacy partners. Um, these are businesses that make a major investment in the chamber in a, on an annual basis, which allows us to offer a lot of our programming um, at either low cost or no cost to our members. And so we always tell, you know, our membership in general, um, if you are thankful for being able to go to a mixer or a professional development program uh, at no charge and send your staff there, these are the companies that you want to thank and try to do business with. Now, obviously, it's a little different this year because everything's being done remotely. Um, and, and we haven't charged for any of our programming all year because we feel it's important to try to push out as much information as we can to as many as we can. So, but but these are the the companies that have really stepped up uh, with the chamber and our true partners in helping to try to improve the business climate for all of our communities. That's so important. Connections right now during this crisis are what's going to be able to see us through. So, Joe, thank you so much for being with us on the Oakland County Mega Cast. We appreciate your time and your insight as well.